In this problem, we're trying to estimate the final height of a ballistic pendulum apparatus. And what I'm doing here is shooting a ball bearing with a spring gun. And in practice, the way you use these things is you would observe the final height of the ballistic pendulum apparatus and work your way back to find the speed of the projectile. In this case, I actually know the speed of the projectile is about 6 meters per second. I know the mass of the ball is about 17 grams. And I have in mind a design for this apparatus so that the catcher, which is going to be metal and clay, is about 200 grams of mass. And I'm trying to estimate what's the final height of this thing. So a ballistic pendulum works like this. The ball impacts the target and is captured in a perfectly inelastic collision. Energy is lost in every perfectly inelastic collision, so I'm expecting that. And then once the ball and catcher reach a final velocity during that collision, they're going to rise to some final height in a process that conserves energy. So that's the final step. All right, let's get into the calculations. Part A, compute the speed of the masses just after impact. That's a momentum conservation idea. P initial is equal to P final. P initial, that's just the mass of the ball. 17 grams, that's 0.017 kilograms. Initial velocity was six meters per second. P final, that's the sum of both masses, so 217 grams, or 0.217 kilograms, times my final velocity there. Solving for V, I get 0 0.470 meters per second after the impact, but before they start rising. All right, part B, compute the energy lost in the collision. Let's look at the initial kinetic energy. That was 1 half mv squared for the ball bearing. It was the only thing that was moving. That's 1 half times 0.017 kilograms times 6 meters per second, all squared. And when I run the numbers, I get 0 0.306 joules. How about K final? So after the collision, the masses are combined. Mass of the ball plus mass of the catcher times that final speed squared. So that's 1 half times 217 grams or 0.217 kilograms times the final speed, 0.47 meters per second, all squared. And when I run the numbers on this, I get 0 0.024 joules. So it looks like the vast majority of the energy was lost. Computing the amount lost, I just look at what was the initial, what was the final, and I get 0.282 joules of energy lost in the collision. Okay, after the collision, energy is conserved as this pendulum smoothly rises to a maximum height. So now I'm looking at an energy conservation problem where right after the impact is my initial state and then the maximum height is my final state. In the initial state, all the energy is kinetic. That's one half times the total mass there. Again, this is just after the inelastic collision. So it's the mass of the ball plus the mass of the catcher times V squared where I'm talking about this V from part A. E final. That's 100% potential, so it's going to be the total mass, mass of the ball plus mass of the catcher, times G times Y final, which is what I'm after here. And again, I assumed that my initial Y coordinate was zero, just to simplify things. All right, the masses cancel out of this calculation, and I get that Y final is going to be V squared over 2G. So that's 0.47 squared over twice 9.8. And I get 0 0.0113 meters for this, or 1.13 centimeters. So I'm actually building one of these this year for the physics lab. And that 1.13 centimeters has me a little bit uneasy because it can be hard to measure that accurately. Uh, we may end up having to measure the angle of elevation instead of the actual height because that'll be a lot easier to keep track of on camera. If you find the physics content on Zach's Lab helpful, click on the Zach's Lab logo on the right to browse playlists and subscribe to the channel. I produce over 100 new videos per month, and subscribing is the easiest way to find new content. Thanks for watching.